In this lesson, I wanted to talk a little bit about playing the rhythm guitar part in a 12-bar blues. Playing the rhythm guitar is also broadly known as comping, which is short for accompanying. I'm doing this lesson kind of in response to some folks who have asked me about the rhythm guitar parts that I played in the play-along tracks in the members area of my website and in the iPad app that I developed. So I'm going to talk about doing a 12-bar blues shuffle in the key of C. So the 1, 4, and 5 chords in the key of C would be C, F, and G. And I'm basically playing a C7 chord, sometimes kind of hinting at a C13 chord a little bit. And then for the 4 chord, I'm using an F9. And for the 5 chord, I'm using a G9. So on that C7 chord, I'm actually not playing the full bar version of the C7. I'm kind of operating under the assumption that the bass player kind of has the low end covered. And so all I'm trying to do is add some rhythmic texture and some punches in and more of the upper register of the guitar. So instead of playing that full C7 chord, I'm basically just playing the top four strings, the, the fourth, third, second, and first strings. And so I'm barring that on the eighth fret, and then I just add my middle finger on the ninth fret of the third string. And that gives me a little partial C7 chord. <laughs> Then to actually play this, here's what it's going to sound like. So what I'm doing at the beginning there, I'm really just playing the fourth and third strings. So I'm barring those on the eighth, eighth fret and then hammering my middle finger down on the ninth fret of the third string giving me this. And then on the way up with my pick on the upstroke, I catch the top two strings also barred here on the eighth fret. So when I put that together, now you saw me add an extra note in right there. That was this A note that's on the uh, tenth fret of the second string. That's actually the sixth or the thirteenth of the key of C, kind of making this into a C13 chord. And I just add that in as a little extra thing uh, at the end of this phrase. Now the chord changes to the F. And in this case, I'm using an F9 chord, which is also basically right here off of the 8th fret. This is kind of the James Brown sort of ninth chord, so I have my middle finger on the F, 8th eighth eighth fret, 5th string, and then my index finger is on the 7th fret of the 4th string, and then my ring finger lays down and bars the 3rd, 2nd, and 1st strings all here on the 8th fret. That's an F9 chord. But this chord is really cool because it's, it's pretty mobile. You can slide it around and you hear guys do this all the time. So when I get to the four chord, I go like this. All right, and after that, it's gonna go back to the one chord. And then the five chord comes in and I do the G9, which is the same exact thing as the F9, but two frets above that. And then I walk that down to the F. And then it goes back to the one chord. And then at the very end, it hits that five chord again, and I approach that from a half step below. So I kind of do an F sharp nine chord real quick, going to the G nine chord. So let me put that whole part together for you now. one of the things I'm kind of imagining in my head is what a horn section might be doing uh, as they play through a 12-bar blues. You know, picture like B.B. King doing a blues in his horn section. And I think the types of things that I'm playing are similar to what you would hear them doing. A big part of it is leaving a lot of space. You know, you don't want to just strum away on a big C7 chord. You know, the more think of it as like little punches to add a little texture to what you're playing. Real quick, I also wanted to mention something about what my pick hand is doing in these shuffle rhythms. I know some folks have a little bit of a tough time 
nailing down a really good sounding shuffle rhythm. So what I want to emphasize here is the importance of how my picking hand is doing it, my left hand, of course, your right hand. Feeling that downbeat really strongly is super important. And the upbeat, you've, you obviously still feel it, but there's less emphasis on it. So you can see as I play these rhythm guitar parts, my my picking hand is constantly doing this. And that's the general feel of it. As I listen to myself, one thing I'm realizing is I'm feeling those downbeats very strongly, but in order to get a real syncopated thing going, I'm actually doing a lot of what I'm playing is on those upbeats. <laughs> So feel the downbeats, but play a lot on the upbeats, and that gives you a really nice syncopated feel. So that covers the 12 Bar Blues Shuffle. And I also want to take a quick look at what I was doing in the rhythm tracks for the 12 Bar Blues Funk that uh, appears in the members area and also uh, in my iPad app. So for the funk tracks, I guess this is kind of my James Brown influence or whatever, but um, I really like to use this ninth chord a lot. So again, what I'm doing, now I'm going to use a C9, I'm sticking with the key of C. So my middle finger is on the C note, fifth, fifth fret, third string. Index finger is on this E, which is on the second fret of the fourth string. And then my ring finger bars the third, second, and first strings all here on the third fret, and I get this chord. <laughs> So I really want to emphasize what my picking hand is doing for these funk rhythms. This is super important. So if the beat of the song is basically here, with my picking hand, I'm essentially subdividing that beat by four. So I'm feeling it like this. So you can hear each strong beat. I'm trying to give a little extra emphasis to the note that's right on the beat. And then, and then it continues for three more after that, so it's... So that feel is pretty much constant. Now, with my fretting hand, I'm, I'm controlling what you're hearing largely by either, you know, having the pressure down on the chord, in which case you can hear the chord, or letting the pressure off of the chord, in which case you're just hearing the scritch scratch of the pick on the strings. So, when I play the C ninth chord, and here's another little thing that I'm doing with that. So I showed you how to play the chord, but what I actually do is I start a half step below that and slide up to it, and it sounds like this. <clears throat> when I get to the four chord, the F, I just take that same ninth chord and move it up here to the 8th fret F. And back to the C, back to the C, and I, again I slide up to that from a half step below it. For the 5 chord, the G, I just moved way up here and did the same exact ninth chord, now here off of this 10th fret G. And then the F, quick little five chord on the turnaround of the progression. I just did this little thing for the G. It's kind of based off the shape of this G chord, but all I did is hammer on from the third to the fourth fret on the third string, and then to this G on the fifth fret of the fourth string. So let me put that whole thing together. Thank you. 
that I really want to point out about the way I'm playing that part is really I'm leaving a lot of space in there. You know, when you want to get a funky rhythm going, what you don't want to do is just be blasting away with your whole pick like this. You know, I, you're hearing maybe 25% of that. You're hearing... So that's a really important thing about a funk rhythm is that it's really almost more about the space that you leave as opposed to the chords that you're actually playing.